One important aspect to consider and to reflect on is why we should bother with learning outcomes. Why should we write them following different taxonomies and following a defined structure? What is the purpose of writing and presenting learning outcomes to our students? And why should learning outcomes be aligned with the teaching methods and assessment activities? One of the most fundamental purposes of learning outcomes is that they should provide clarity and definition for a range of people. As an educator, the learning outcomes should help you design your teaching and learning activities, including the assessment design and criteria. As a student, learning outcomes provide information about the focus of the curriculum, allowing the student to know if the program or module is right for them. It also helps to focus their learning more specifically. When designed effectively, learning outcomes ensure that the student is central to the experience because they link the curriculum, assessment, and all teaching and learning activities together. And of course, it is not just the student and educator who have a vested interest in the learning outcomes. There are a range of external bodies who will need to be assured that the program is delivering what it is supposed or expected to be delivering. Examples here might include registering or professional bodies, your employers or quality assurance agencies. So the overall purpose for using learning outcomes is multifaceted. It enhances the level of transparency, provides guidance and information, and ensures a degree of equality. Learning outcomes should also guide educators on how to design their learning activities, the teaching methods to use, and how they will assess learning, which assessment activities they will plan. Bix advocates a concept referred to as constructive alignment, as a means to enhance student engagement. And what he suggests is that it is not only the use of innovative and exciting methods of teaching that can engage students. It is equally important that the educator gets the basic of the course structure right. Learning takes place through the active behavior of the student. It is what they do that is learned, not what the teacher does. So looking at this model, we can see that it depicts a clear and close interrelation between three core elements, the intended learning outcomes, the learning activities, and the assessment and feedback activities. Biggs suggests that if there is a misalignment of any of these elements, then there is a much higher risk that the students will become disengaged. Consider, for example, sitting an exam, and when you see the first question, you realize it bears no resemblance to the learning that you have been directed to within the course. This misalignment, or poor linkage, of the three core elements encourages students to learn simply for an assessment, rather than engaging with the full curriculum and investing themselves in the learning activities. In a similar way, if students are not able to see a direct link between their learning activities and the assessment, then they may be less motivated to undertake the learning. It is also important that the learning outcomes match the assessment and learning activities. By this, we are referring to the levels. If the assessment is too easy compared to some complex learning outcomes or learning activities, then again, there is more chance that the student will conclude that their efforts are not required within the learning activities. All of these examples are factors that lead to surface level learning. Such disengaged learners may be absent from your classes or easily distracted whilst in your classes because they are making a judgment that not all activities are of relevance to them and so do not warrant their efforts. If you design your program with a close and obvious interrelationship between these three core factors, Big's model suggests that students will engage at a higher level because they are able to see the relevance to them in every aspect of the program. 
So these are some of the reasons why we should consider a proper structure when writing our learning outcomes and also why we should consider that our learning outcomes are appropriately aligned with the teaching methods and with the assessment activities that we plan to deliver in our courses or in our teaching sessions.